Hey y'all, um, <laughs> I can't tell you where I'm at. This is another one of those uh, private collections that uh, I got to kind of keep it on the uh, DL on where the exact location is, but I'm in the Midwest somewhere. And uh, I have, uh, John Jennings actually turned me on to it. One of, the, uh, one of the nicest Corvette collections I've been in. It's got one of the most complete pace car collections um, outside of what General Motors has. So anyways, um, <clears throat> some rare cars in here. I think I'm going to kind of do a video of a uh, General Overcast and uh, then we'll pick a couple of the really uh, rare cars and do some features on that. But let me get inside. Let's take a look at this thing. Look at that, would you? If you all like Corvettes, if you're a Corvette fan, I think you're really gonna dig this place. Let me go run the two knuckleheads down that run the place, see if I can get them to tell me something about it. Boy, it must be nice. Hey. Huh? Y'all get to work around all these cool cars and play pool too. You got a big screen TV, you got a wet bar. Did your all's wives know you come here? They think we're working. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Sean? Steve, how are you guys? Real good. How you doing, man? I'm outstanding, man. Look where I'm at. Welcome right. to the Corvette Country Club. Man, thanks so much for inviting me. Tell me a little bit about what we got going on here. Well, this is a private collection owned by a uh, very benevolent man in the community. Been successful in his business life. He's also a philanthropist. Uh, 42 cars in this building, starting from 1953, going around the building. All the way around to here. Let's uh, start over here then, if that's how it works. It works in chronographical order, kind of. Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. See, I didn't make. I, I barely made it out of high school. So, <coughs> 1953, the first year of Corvette, Arctic white, red interior, black top, 35th car built, and also he has the 50th anniversary, 2003 with the matching serial number. Isn't that crazy, guys? He's got this one that's 1035, and then General Motors is able to hook him up with the 2003, and it ends up in the same VIN number, 1035, and same, same color conversation combination. I'm, the car's not here, so I've not seen it, but it's my understanding it must be a convertible, white with red interior, black top. With a black convertible top. That's Dude, right. that's cool, and man. And incidentally, there was a third car that was built that went across, to, across the pond right. with the same VIN number. And he obtained that car also with wow. the same VIN number, but it was European spec. Right. Uh, U.S. Customs said that they wouldn't allow it into uh, the United States with a title, so therefore we have a bill of sale. But it's a anniversary red 2003 uh, with the same VIN number. I got gotcha. you. Cool. What's that next to it? This 54. is 1954. <clears throat> they only made four black 1954 Corvettes. We're going to come back and do a feature on that one, so um, we'll get more details on that, because that's a real rare car. Only one of four. One of four. 54s that were made in black and some other things. And then look at this car here. Now, this is uh, this is gentleman's daughter's, one of her favorite cars in here, but to me, it's like, man, right? You got yellow, and then that's, you went with the accent of a green top on two of it. Well, I mean... You have to understand the, the, the whole supply and demand thing. Right. They only made 120 cars of this color. Right. And that's because it wasn't a real popular color. You don't think? It, well, uh -huh. that, the, 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 <laughs> yeah, I don't think. <laughs> well, you figured that I wonder out. why. I wonder why. I wonder why this wasn't the number one color. Sean, what you, or Steve, what do you think? Tell you what, it'd be hard for me to, uh, I don't to th own a yellow car like this one. I'm thinking. They make cool yellows, but that ain't one of them. Yeah. That's that that's that real my I appreciate the car, don't get me wrong, I'm not banging the guy's car, but yeah, that's just funny to see in history what, what was cool and what you know what I'm saying, what even made it to market, you right. know? Right. Um but I guess they were probably going after more of that female market at that time. Well maybe. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. that would be a pastel color and obviously the girl here likes it. So Well, there's another car down the row here. Right. That's another rare color. Let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. We got a 56 here. It's got the rare power top option. Yeah. And, and most of these cars have been certified. Twice. NCRS and, certified. And Bloomington. And Gold. Bloomington. So, and that's the thing about this collection. There's no custom cars in here, per se. These are all restored. Um, so you all, all you Corvette enthusiasts should be happy to know. There's a garage full of these cars that's being taken well 
taken care of and uh, they're not being hot rotted or chopped up in any well, way. Well, here's another really rare one because look at the awards here. Uh, top light four different times, Bloomington Gold, Gold Spinner, Duntoff Award, and Triple Crown. Wow. Holy smokes. That's a lot of awards. How long ago was that? that Remember? No, yeah, no. no, I do not. I have to go back to the records for that time. I got gotcha. you. Has it been done a while? I guess is where I was going with that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and you all do some of the work around here, too, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. obviously, I was busting you, but, I mean, you do work here. But you do some of the repairs and maintenance and body, even, you were telling me. Yeah, there's a car right over you here. You said if I scratched one, no problem. You could take it, get it right out. Well, that's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to teach you how to run a buffer, too. I so got you. you're going to help do it. You're going to teach a man how to fish? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got you. Uh, back over here is a 1961 Fawn Beige, another rare color. Big brake car. Yeah. And that car is also top flighted. Uh, regional, national, Bloomington Gold, uh, a Duntop performance verification, and a gold spinner. And it's fuel injected. It's a fuel leak. Right. They couldn't have made it. They didn't make a lot of those either, did they? Mm -mm. No. That's a beautiful car. Man. We have two 1962s, one 1962, a black one, and a red one right here. Man, I grew up around Corvettes, and I forgot that they jumped from that body style, those body styles, to this body to style. that body style. This is a '63 split window. You wonder why people went crazy in '63 when the new vet hit. That's like the, the '14 vet hitting, right? Everybody wanted to. This is a much sleeker, much cooler looking car to me. I mean, I appreciate where these cars came from, but really, that first generation doesn't right. do as much for me as these start to. Get a shot of that rear split because that's what makes this car. Oh yeah. Pretty unique, and also get a shot of the uh, the, the two ear knockoffs. spinners. Yeah, these are a rare set. Real knockoffs. Of real two ear spinners, not three, but two. Wow! Holy smokes! I wouldn't know without sitting one next to each other, but they, most of them came with three on it. Right. Yeah. Here's there's one with three on it. Yeah. Right. And there's a reason why these two ear spinners. It was a new concept, a new idea that right. the GM engineers came up with. But when guys were complaining when they had to use the lead hammer to bang this one ear, if it was at a weird angle, they were hitting the car. And oh, no. So they were com complaining. So the engineers listened, and they said, all right, we'll switch it and make a three-ear spinner. And to have a car with a true set of two-eared spinners is very rare. Right. Very rare. I saw in a trade magazine where a guy had a set of wheels and two weird spinners for sale for $70,000. Oh, you're kidding me. No. Holy smokes. And here's a true set. No kidding. Man, mental note. If you find some two weird spinners, <laughs> you know, stick those in your pocket because they're worth gold, man. Right. Awesome. We got a 396 back there. Yeah. That'd be a big block, 396? Oh, for sure. Yeah. It's the predecessor to the 427, which is right next door here. Let's see under the hood of that, right? Oh, yeah. How simple it was back then, right? Yeah. Motor, spark plugs, a couple of wires, ignition, fuel line. Yeah. What else does a man need? A lot of raw horsepower. That's right. Yeah, it was, the horsepower wasn't anywhere near as refined as it is now either, right? The horsepower now with the, with the ZR1 is very sophisticated. Right. But these, this is just raw horsepower. Yeah, it just comes on. You either got it or you don't got it. You know what I'm saying? There's no in-between with these types. Man, well, how many 427 vets do you have in here? Well, there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six of the old 427. Right. There's six of them. This one is nationally known as the Black Rat. Right. Uh, original paint. This has not been restored. It's been buffed many times. That's original paint? That's original paint. Holy smoke, interior and everything else must be original too, right? Mm -hmm. No? Yeah? yeah? Man. Whereas, so that's a 66. This is also a 66. This one was restored by a gentleman up in Wisconsin. And this is the picture of the car as he found it in a barn in Wisconsin. Wow. And this is what a good restoration. 
You like. did you all do this one? No. No. Uh, gentleman in Wisconsin did. We do we do have some you did we're gonna give you a shout out on. All right. Open that hood for me if you don't mind. <coughs> Just like they were back in the day. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. That's what a good restoration does. <coughs> There's supposed to be overspray on the intake manifold right. and all of the bolts because when the car, when the engine was painted, the guy just took us a, a spray gun <coughs> and then sprayed over it, so there was overspray. Right. For judging purposes, that overspray should be there. If it's not there, you get points off. Same thing with this uh, with this hose here with the bypass hose. There should be paint overspray on these clamps and up here also huh no they didn't care no it's no it's a quick deal <coughs> i guess you get overspray in the headers too yeah yeah and that's supposed to be there right if it's not there it's not right well i like that 66 oh yeah isn't that cool man oh it's beautiful that is a beautiful car and this 67 i like this 67 too though all of those awards there on that wall right there go with this car well we better not get too close those there may be a name or something I, that we want to decorate do. it Man, 427, 435 horse, L71. It's, it's the granddaddy. You ain't kidding. That's the one right there. And this is a true lacquer paint job on this 67. Wow. You know what? I like that car. I think that's one of the most elegant looking Corvettes. It's called that, Lindale Blue. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. I, don't know if I, I don't know if I had the guts to order it. But I like it. I think it's a really refined looking car, and I love the accent, the the top, you know, the top color they used on it and all. No, I just think that's a, I, when I was walking through here earlier, I said, boy, that's a pretty car. And now we're getting into the generation of Corvettes where I think that. This is where the model year changed over from a C, uh, from a mid-year to a C3. So it went from a 67 to, to a 68. 68. Huge change, again. It was a total redesign. Let's see the 427 in this one. The hood's right. open. This one? Yeah. Man. Tripar. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. Oh, How yeah. about that? Three deuces. Dude. And uh, incidentally, because these cars have all been judged, when, when people say numbers matching, right. it's very important to understand. The alternator is date coded and part numbered. Each triple deuce carb is date coded. Uh, the air valve or the, the, the pump is, is part numbered and date coded. The radiator is also, right. I mean, we could go through this all day long. The right. distributor. Everything is the everything. way that it would have been in 68. And it costs money to do it. No question but about it. You get it done. There's no, uh, there's none of that aftermarket stuff on any of these. No. A repop as they call them, right? No. Yeah. This is a car here, the 69, triple black, is a car that Steve and I redone. I love that, dude. Wow, you guys did a great job. How long did it take you to do that? It took us over a year, but then we, we, we farmed out the body work to another company, of course. Right. Uh, but we took this thing down to the frame. Took the frame in, had it uh, media blasted, repainted, brought everything back. The parts bill on this car alone was in excess of ten thousand dollars huh yeah just for the parts right it was a good time oh we, yeah. had, a, we had a blast doing it the lt1 i love those cars too they made me smile that was the car that proved to me i knew how to drive a stick shift i was telling you earlier sean that when i was about 12, 13 years old, I had to move one of these in a garage, and I was as nervous as I could be. But I didn't burn the clutch out, and I didn't wreck it. So at that point, I was like, you know what? I think I can drive a stick. But, man, I just, I like those Stingrays, those generations of vets. I just think they were cool, you know? Yeah. And then you got into the lost years. Yeah, yeah. You really get into the lost years. And my dad had a 74, so, you know, I mean, they just... You know, I think that that 75, it's got a 350 and 165 horse, sure enough, right there. Well, and, that was in, during the years where right. the EPA and That's the federal issues. government took the horsepower ratings and demanded that those horsepower ratings be a much lower right. for fuel economy. But I had an 84 Z28 with an HO305, and it had 210 horse. And my dad had a 74 Corvette with a 350, and it had 165 horse in it. So, right. you know, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Unfortunately... <laughs> um, the government was screwing everybody at this time in, in making high-performance cars, but it's really not the uh, 
it's really not the Corvette that's most I would sought after because they don't ride all that good, mm. right? Oh, you they're like they're like lumber trucks, you know. The seats are real thin, you know. I mean, it was a Corvette, an apple cart. Right, right, right. Yeah. And then on top of that, they won't hardly get out of their own way. So I mean, um, <clears throat> but everybody was going through it. This that's is the silver first anniversary. year for the uh, pace car, Indianapolis 500 pace car. Right. And this car has 989 miles on it. A very beautiful piece. I do like the mirrored tops, though. <clears throat> I am a fan of that. Is it a low production number too? Well, they made a they made quite a few of them, but the lower the the mileage number, the better off you're going to be. Sure. And this car here. 1978, same year as the Pace car, but this is called what it's called the Silver Anniversary car, with the Silver Anniversary paint scheme, and you can see across the top of the windshield it says 60 miles. Holy smokes! So, this is one that's very Im impressive. Right. Uh, hey, and look at that horsepower jumped up to 225 at this point. Right. They were really cranking it out, weren't they? Look at that carpet too, right? How cool is that? 1978 Corvette carpet with the factory CD. <laughs> Or CB. CB, no kidding. Holy Still smokes. Yeah, oh man, how crazy is that? I remember though, you could do it. Yeah. Huh. This is a trip down memory lane. Uh, Ooh, you talk about color combinations, man. <laughs> what went on here, you think? I think huh? I was a mistake myself, too. Sean, that's not, that wasn't your personal car. You didn't order that one? You didn't order that one? No. Steve? Oh, no. I didn't no? order that one either. Yeah, this one's a little hard to. Uh, you know, it's a neat car, but, you know, it's a little hard. Well, to you know what, and, and if you, again, you go back in the time, that was a color combination, you know, light and dark brown, probably looked good on a blazer, looked good on several things. I'm just not so sure it looks so good on a Corvette. This you know? is one of those color combinations where you either love it. Right. Or you, or you don't. You know? Yeah. It's polar. And look, now we're back down to 190 horse. What happened? Oh, this had the L82s over there. Yeah. Yeah. Those were the higher production. Right, right, right. Uh, Horsepowers. I like that car though too, for some reason. That's an anniversary or something, isn't it? Something kind of a celebration, no? It's not a special? It's, well, it's a crossfire. Well, it, <laughs> that makes it special for the wrong reasons, but <laughs> yeah. What year was the first crossfire? 82? What year is this one? Special collector edition. That's it. That's yeah. exactly right. Now, I knew there was something special about that fade paint down the side of it and all that. It's a good looking car, though. Look at those Eagle GTs. Boy, everybody wanted Eagle GTs back then, oh, right? Yeah. Those were race tires. Oh, yeah. And now, here we go. Get oh, what's that? that engine. That's a true ZR1 engine. Oh, wow. Never been in a car. Boy. After the ZR1 uh, program, right? the ZR1 was uh, designed by Lotus. Right. Assembled by Merck Cruiser under contract for Chevrolet. Right. So this was a leftover engine from that whole program, and it's never been assembled or never been in a car. In a car. So there was some leftover. Our boss bought one, and right. there it is on an engine stand. How cool is that? Because I am a big fan of the ZR1. I'll it's never, as long, I'll get an Alzheimer's, and I'll not forget that. Like motor treading cover that had that red one on it going sideways, burnout, and it said 70 mile an hour burnout. It's the Corvette ZR1. <laughs> and as a kid, I was just like, you got to be kidding me. Because, again, we're coming out of this era here right. where you had to do reverse drop burnouts, you know, to get a, get a squawk out of a car. And here they got one going 70, just lighting the tires off. How cool is that? But now we're getting into the Corvettes where... They started to, the horsepower started to come back. They started to handle. They were they were desirable cars again. Um, I'll never forget like what '84. They didn't make an '83. So nope. when these came out in '84, it was like holy. Here's a cow. 1988 35th anniversary edition. Right on. 90 miles. Practically brand new. Practically, yeah. That is a ZR1. It is. Holy smokes. Well, you didn't see that earlier? Dude, you, you, you can't tell them from the front. We just had that judged this summer at Bloomington Gold, and we achieved 98.9% uh, on the car. How many miles is on this one? 1,800. No kidding. Man. Very low mileage. Right on. I don't know. You know, if I was, if I was pressed to pick a vet... I like the new ZR1, but um, I don't know. I almost would take one of those. 
and there's a Grand Sport, 96 Grand Sport. We had this car judged also this summer. Actually, we have two of these uh, Grand Sport convertibles. Uh, one with a red, a rare red, red leather interior. interior. Right, right. Yeah. That's cool. You, so, you had one of those too? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's one of those things you wouldn't think look cool, but the red interior ones are cool. Oh, it's yeah, very yeah, striking. Yeah, yeah. And then we're going to do a feature on this car too, because this is a very rare car here. This is a Yanko, a real Yanko Corvette 2001. Only one uh, kind of a pre production, what am I trying to say? Where they figure things out, right? Right. Yeah. We'll get around to that. We'll have a better story on that. And then this is number 50. Low numbers, low miles. And the owner of the collection said if it's not in here, it's not worth having. Although there are a couple you're looking for. There is. Yeah, there's there, a couple there's you're looking couple. for. You need one to complete your pace car collection. 2006. Ron Fellows edition. Look at that. This is the Ron Fellows edition. They made 399 of these. Right. To commemorate what Ron Fellows has done. That's right. I like that how they did so, that sticker. That's yeah. cool, isn't it? In 2001, 02, 03, 04, 05, 06. Yeah, we moved that mirror so that we don't hit it with a blank pool. No, I got you. Yeah, the last thing you want to do is be jacking around and scratch one of these with a pool cue, right? That's why we break going the other direction. Nah. Oh, I never <laughs> thought about that for sure. You'd much rather break a window as you would to break. You'd rather break that glass than this glass. Oh, wow. And then, like I said, we'll come through these pace cars. Guys, y'all, I know I got a cool job, but I think y'all are, y'all give me some competition. Uh, you got is, it made. Yeah, this is uh, heaven in here. Right. But y'all are firefighters in the real world, right? Right, yeah. Let me give y'all a big shout out, man. Thanks for all you do. Not just you two, but what firefighters do. Because like they say, when everybody's running out, y'all are running in. We're the crazy ones running in. That's right. Man. It's, it's a calling. Folks, thanks so much for giving me time to look at this collection. Thank you for coming. Sean, Steve, thanks again. Thanks, sir. Folks, there you go. I wish I could tell you where I'm at, but I can't. But you know I brought you along, right? So you could see it, too. This is a one really nice Corvette collection from somewhere in the Midwest. Hope you all have enjoyed it. See you.